Hello guys, this is Jacob. Today, I'm gonna make a video uh, to show you how to build Anything LLM on Kaggle. So Anything LLM is a all-in-one desktop and Docker AI application with built-in RAG, AI agents, um, and a lot more. Um, so if you Google well, Anything LLM, you can search for their GitHub, repo, and uh, you should land up on this page. Uh, if you go through the documentation, uh, they have a lot of the instructions and then you can uh, go through uh, different sections to figure out how to install. So in this tutorial, um, we're going to show you how to do that on Kaggle. So there's a different ways to set it up, a different ways to set up on local. Uh, I think uh, a very easy way is to build it on Kaggle. So that being said, let's get started. So first, uh, open um, your Kaggle.com, a notebook. So uh, anything LM is actually uh, fairly complicated uh, if you want to set it up on Kaggle because uh, it doesn't just need one notebook, actually it needs two notebooks. So one notebook serves as a server, the other notebook will serve as a client. So in the other videos in this channel, we talk a lot about how to turn the uh, Kaggle to a virtual machine, but that's just for one notebook. So for anything LLM, you need to set up two notebooks, one for server, one for client. That's how it is. Uh, if you set up in one notebook, uh, somehow it will not work. So uh, let's continue. So first we set up the anything LM server. So first we create a function uh, to run batch commands on uh, Python. And then basically we just also have to uh, make sure that uh, the node binary is actually exist in user bin. So uh, so we just basically do a soft link because uh, the current node in Kaggle is actually in Conda. So you have to do a soft link and then uh, you can install Olama if you want, uh, but it doesn't require Olama. Uh, you can also use uh, Grok, which is what we're going to demo in this uh, tutorial. Uh, so, and then if you want to use Olama, just go through all the steps. We have talked a lot more uh, in this channel um, and the other videos. So uh, just set up Olama. Uh, using one line command and also spin up on Llama server uh, using and this command. So then if you want to Llama, you also have to set up the uh, uh, models. One is for LLM, the other one is for the uh, text embed. So uh, this is basically how to set it up. Just do uh, the pull command and then you can uh, run Llama on list to check out the uh, existing models. and. Uh, you also uh, have to set up the uh, dependencies um, for uh, the anything LLM. So first, you have to set up Yarn because if you look at their documentation, uh, most of the command is actually Yarn. So, uh, so you have to set up Yarn and then make sure uh, a node and Yarn exist. And then uh, we basically just clone the REPL uh, from anything LLM and then basically uh, CD to that directory. Um, we basically check out the uh, package that JSON to see if anything that needs to be changed. You don't have to touch it. I just put it here for demonstration purpose, such as you can actually uh, do a silent install for the young uh, install dependencies. And uh, basically, uh, you just can run a yum setup uh, and also direct the output to uh, the dev.node, then you actually can compress the output, which is very important. So if you actually uh, do a young setup, there's a lot of output, which means actually can actually freeze this page. So uh, this is helpful when you actually try to uh, run a smooth young setup. Also, sometimes um, it, it doesn't actually stop. In that case, you have to stop it and run again. This is going to make sure that it actually outputs something like this. So uh, so this means um, the setup is ready, the dependencies are installed, the Prisma is installed and generated, um, and also schema is ready and migration is done. So uh, that means uh, that uh, yarn and setup is completed. Then we basically have to uh, also make sure the uh, co uh, CORS, the cores, are uh, set up correctly for the domain. You don't have to uh, change it, but if you do have some course issues, make sure uh, you uh, use the course. I also miss you, the default one is orange equals to true, that's fine. Uh, but if you do have issues, you can try also the uh, re remove the origin. So 
Also, the other file, which is the uh, collector, collector uh, index.js, um, you also uh, can check the uh, course if you have issues. You can actually also do app that use course instead of app use course art. Uh, so let's continue. So that's the places you have to change for the collector index.js and the server index.js. And uh, okay, you don't have to touch it. That's optional. If you have issues, you can change it. And then we have to change the uh, environment configurations. So um, in the uh, server environment, so uh, you have to basically uh, specify the server port and JWT secret and a six key and six salt. So um, basically they're a random string at 12 characters long. Uh, here's a function, you can just take it and just use it for uh, string generations. Uh, this is basically 12 digits, 32 digits, 32 digits. So you can output something like that, just copy paste it to your environment variable. And um, here you can specify all the models you want to use. You can specify like OpenAI and OpenAI key. Um, so you also can specify a llama if you use a llama. And specify the model, uh, token limits, uh, a llama base path. Um, if you use Grok, you can also say uh, the Grok key. Uh, and model you want to use as default, you can change it um, when you once you uh, be able to log it in. So this is just for uh, the default setup. And then you can set up the embedding engine. Uh, if you want Olama as your embedding engine, you can set up this way. Uh, you basically can set up the embedding model as nomic embed tags. Then uh, you can also uh, keep the rest of the um, configuration. Uh, you don't have to change anything. Uh, if you don't want uh, auth, you can just change the auth token because it's empty. So you don't go through the auth. Um, and then after that, because uh, we're actually using the dev, so uh, we also have to make a copy uh, to basically copy the environment to uh, environment.development. So after that, um, uh, you just have to uh, make two services uh, spin up at the same time. In that sense, we have to use supervisor. So because in this demo, we're not going to use GPU on Kaggle. Everything is on CPU, but we're going to call Grok to make the ROM work. So uh, we have to set up, spin up the supervisor. Um, in supervisor, we just have to add two entries. One is for the anything LM server. So we require a write up a configuration for uh, anything LM server. And uh, we spin up uh, using the uh, conda yarn. So uh, we just spin up the conda yarn and then make sure the uh, path to run the command is in the Kaggle working anything LM. And basically, we just spin up the server. Uh, we also specify the log as anything LM server error and output as the uh, uh, standard error file and set a log file. So auto start equals to true, auto restart also equals to true. That's for the anything LM server setup, uh, server configuration. We do the same for uh, anything LM collector. So uh, basically, we just spin up the anything LM collector as dev collector. But also uh, the same for the yarn and also the running path, the running folder. So uh, the log is anything LM collector, anything LM collector. Right. So for the error and also the output. Um, then we basically just uh, start supervisor. So you see uh, supervisor is starting up. And we check the status for uh, anything LM, anything LM collector. So you see both are running. Because we're actually setting up the uh, front end in a different notebook, uh, which is going to be a different instance. So we don't uh, run the uh, anything LM front end in this notebook. So you see the two uh, instances or two services are up and running. And then lastly, for this uh, server, uh, notebook setup, we just have to install uh, ungrok, which is to expose the service uh, to the outside. So basically make it public. So to install ungrok, we can just do a pip install, py ungrok and ungrok. After that, uh, we basically just uh, get a token from ungrok console. If you go to ungrok uh, official website, just register your account, and then you should be able to get a, a ungrok a token from the user console and make sure that exists. And uh, also, uh, if we want to um, uh, check out if the port is running correctly, we just do uh, the uh, ls off. So we just do a quiet install. And then 
uh, we basically check if the port is running. So because uh, we actually only run th uh, 3001, which is the server port, so then you cannot see the 3000. 3000 is actually front end port. So you can see the node is running on 3001 port. So and then we basically expose 3001 to the uh, public. So we just use ngrok to expose that to the public. You can see this public URL is going to point to the local 3001. So that's it. So if you have any issues with the server setup or the ngrok, you can also do a cleanup. So you can actually get all the uh, ngrok kernels and then uh, if somehow the free plan has exceeded the uh, uh, threshold, then you can just turn all that off and then restart. Um, hope this is um, clear. So let's go to the client. So the server is set up, then we go to the anything LM client. So um, for anything LM client, we also do the same for uh, the node uh, soft link. So make sure that the uh, node is linked uh, to the user bin folder. And uh, we just do a uh, also uh, create a util command to actually basically run the bash command in the Python environment. We we'll do the um, basic npm install yarn, make the yarn is available, and we clone the REPL, a CD to the REPL, and then the same, we actually just try to uh, basically uh, copy the package JSON for reference. So if you need to change anything in the uh, basically the install process, you can change it in the package JSON. Uh, in the uh, root folder of anything LLM. Then uh, we still do the same install. Uh, basically, just make sure uh, all the dependencies are set up. Uh, but this, even this is actually only set up the front end, uh, which is supposed to be just in the front end subfolder. But we just uh, uh, install everything. Uh, if you have issues with the uh, young setup, um, you can click cancel run and then run that again. So it will actually. Um, uh, end up with the uh, this um, something similar to this. So once this is ready, uh, the young setup ready, it asks you to run young dev server dev collector dev frontend. If you see this uh, similar uh, sort of output, that means uh, uh, the dependencies are set up correctly. Then uh, you have to change the white configuration. So because the anything um, frontend is actually building using white, uh, so you have to make sure the white uh, is uh, set up correctly because we're using ngrok. Ngrok has a security issue. Uh, if you do have that issue, uh, uh, which is called a uh, um, uh, uh, ngrok 6022, so this is an error that um, basically um, sort of security when you first access ngrok. So if you look at what it is, basically. Um, uh, to pr they, they basically ngrok is to prevent abuse, right? So if you uh, bypass, want to bypass it, you just basically add a header. So you have to add a header in the byte configuration. So make sure this is in place, the headers is in place. Make sure that ngrok skip browser warning, you can set a number like that. And then that will apply to all the requests. Uh, for this um, other thing, which is the uh, front-end source utils request JS, uh, you also have to update the uh, base headers as well to use the same uh, key and value for the uh, header. So then ngrok skip browser warning, make sure that uh, this is also in the base headers. This is going to be applied to all the REST calls. And in the system, uh, the uh, basically the model system, also front end source model system, make sure that uh, the keys, there's a keys, uh, basically this uh, REST for service. Um, so then this one, uh, make sure that uh, it's also added in here. So then um, basically you will uh, apply the base headers as well, which is the uh, ungrok header and also the authentication. So this is something that you have to add if you want to set it up on cable. OK, so that's uh, all the changes you have to make for these few files in the uh, anything LM front end. And, uh, OK, this is basically overwrite this system.js file. And after that, uh, just make sure that the front end is pointed to the back end, which is 6CF3, which is the 6CF3 that we actually set up in here. Right. So make sure that the front end is pointed to the back end. And make sure that it's a point to the API endpoint. 
So then um, we can uh, see if that's actually in the uh, environment, just do a cat. And after that, uh, we also have to install a supervisor and make sure the supervisor is set up for front end. And uh, front end using the same uh, command line as the back end, also the collector. Um, basically, we specify the path as anything LM root path. Make sure that dev is front end. So we just use yarn to spin that up. And uh, we have to just start uh, the supervisor for the front end as well. And then we check the status. So the front end is running. Uh, and also we have to expose the front end. Uh, so you have to install ungrow to expose the front end to the public. And then this is the same process as the back end setup. Uh, so the server, so you have to get an ungrow token as well from ungrow console and paste it here. And then also have to install the uh, um, OS off if you want to check the uh, port, if the port is running and make sure the port is running, the 3000 is there. Uh, so make sure the 3000 is available. So then basically means that the uh, ungrok will point to the 3000 so they can actually expose the front end service. And basically this is to uh, expose the 3000 port uh, for the front end to the public. So that's it. And then if you go uh, click this link, uh, you will see this actually set up correctly uh, as the front end. So uh, you can start using uh, and start using the anything LLM. So you can actually uh, go to the main page. And also, um, if you uh, have any issues, um, you can just uh, comment uh, in this video. So you can see this is actually uh, set up. So then you can see, you can actually create a new workspace, you can actually configuration. Uh, you can go to the uh, the space you uh, created. Let's say for this one, we demo, it's called Kegel test. You can just configure it. Um, so then you can actually configure uh, like the chat settings, general settings, back to database. Uh, the default is LensDB. Um, you can also set up the agent confirmation information. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, if you do have any questions, please comment in the comment section. Um, if you do like this video, please subscribe, um, like, or comment if you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, see you in the next one.